Welcome in everyone to my honest review of Madden 22 franchise mode and this is actually going to be a pretty fun video to make as over the last four or five years of Madden reviews on this channel well myself and most of you have spent quite a lot of time yelling at EA and begging for some much needed upgrades but now in large part thanks to this community and what we've accomplished during the fix Madden franchise movement on Twitter we actually have a lot of new features here to discuss, which is really exciting. In this video, I'll be going over the newly added features for Madden 22 Franchise Mode, as well as pointing out some of the major things still missing from the game mode. My goal here is to present you my honest opinions of this year's game and ultimately provide you with what you need to determine if you should buy the game this year or not. Before we get started though, please do consider dropping a like down below if you enjoy the video or find it informative. Also, as many of you know, the majority of my Madden content now gets uploaded on my second channel, TFG Plays. So if you want to see more Madden videos from me, including my realistic rebuilds, head over and drop a subscribe to TFG Plays, and I'll see you there. But now, without further ado, let's take a dive into Madden 22 Franchise Mode. And I want to start with the major features being added this year, and then I'll get into some of the more small stuff. Uh, but one of the biggest and first things you'll notice when you load up your first new franchise is that for the first time since Barack Obama was president, Franchise Mode has an entirely new interface. I like the aesthetics of this interface, and it does a really nice job of tying the different menus together in a way that makes sense. Another thing it does really well is it pushes more information from around the league to the forefront of your experience, which is a nice touch to increase immersion and take yourself outside of that bubble that we've all really experienced in our previous franchise modes. You know, now instead of, it feels like the rest of the league was living in your world, now it feels much more like you are living inside the league as it pushes news and stats, like I said, much more to the forefront there. Uh, ultimately, the actual content of the menus, it's mostly the same, same stuff we're used to there, uh, but this was a much needed addition to at least help the mode feel like it was actually upgraded because it just simply looks different, but as well as increasing league immersion just by the way that things were ordered around there. Uh, but new menus surely isn't the most exciting addition here, that'd be really underwhelming. It's simply the first thing you'll notice. But now we're gonna take a look at the new weekly game planning feature. And this feature actually goes much deeper than you might think. So every week now, this feature has you take a more in-depth look at your upcoming opponent. The game will present you with your opponent's top player, who you may consider trying to focus your game plan on trying to stop, as well as several statistics that help you better understand what is working or not working for your opponent that week. On each side of the ball, you will select a focus. These range from stopping outside run to containing the quarterback and on offense from passing deep to pounding the rock inside. All of your players will then get attribute bonuses designed to help you accomplish this goal that you've now set. But as I understand, only on pre-selected play calls that are pre-designed to accomplish whatever game plan you have selected that week. So for example, if you want to stop inside run, formations with bigger personnel, for example, may receive boost to things like block shedding or tackling. And if you look at the attributes that go up from these game plans, these boosts may at first sight seem a little overpowered, but in my experience, it was actually necessary for them to be as big as they seem for you to truly feel like you chose the right game plan uh, for it to actually start to really show up inside the game. Uh, if they made it too small, you really wouldn't notice much of a difference. I think they got the, the size of these boosts correct, and ultimately I ended up really enjoying that aspect of it. And then at halftime, you can actually adjust your game plan. Now I will say, I do wish that for immersive purposes that they reduced the boost that you receive from these adjustments, because it really doesn't make sense that after 20 minutes adjusting your game plan, you'd get the same boost from a full week of practice. Other than that, I, I will say having something to think about at halftime is something we've never really had. And it's still a, a great addition, kind of having something to think about at halftime and having a, a tangible adjustment at half. And I could really just picture my coach screaming at the players in the locker room after just getting steamrolled in the first half and having to adjust his game plan. 
But what's really awesome here is that this is only a portion of what weekly game planning accomplishes here, as it also acts as an overhaul to the training system and the way that players gain XP, as well as an introduction to a more in-depth injury system. Gone now are the days of selecting the same old boring drills and having to get gold medals that forced you to choose just a fraction of your position groups. Now players will receive XP as you do your weekly game plan, and every player will earn XP. This effectively serves as your practice for the week, and just as real coaches do, you will be able to cater your practice that week to your team's needs. You can adjust the tempo of practice, choose how to distribute reps between starters and backups, and the harder you practice, the more XP you will gain, but now with a newly added fatigue setting, the harder you practice, the more your players will risk fatigue and injury. Yes, even during practice, injuries. Uh, but not to worry there, for the more casual players, you can disable practice injuries, and they're never really all that severe to begin with. I actually really liked having them on. It felt really immersive, but that option is there to turn it off. You can also monitor individual player health now. This is something that the community has been asking for a long, long time, but as this is an honest review, the actual player health system that has been introduced this year, it's much more of a tease right now of what could potentially be coming as right now, it's just pretty shallow. It's good to see it there, and you can get some cool information, and surely the fatigue stuff is tangible uh, and impacts the game and how often guys get hurt in certain lights. But there's plenty more room to develop this injury system. So I would just say I would lower your expectations a little bit if player health and a new injury system was at the top of your wish list. But this is definitely... Uh, the first time that we've gotten really anything to do with fatigue and injuries in a long time, so it's good to see it. So to say that this weekly game planning feature and everything that it accomplishes is well overdue would be an absolute understatement, but I honestly think EA knocked it out of the park with this one, and I think people are really going to enjoy the feeling of having to think about who you're going up against that week, as well as you know, the different ways it spices up one of the most outdated systems in Madden franchise mode being that player training system that is now much, much different. And what's crazy is everything I've mentioned so far is already kind of more than EA has put into franchise mode over at least the last three years or so, but we aren't even all that close to being done talking about the new additions to franchise mode this year. The next major addition has been the number one request from my own wishlist videos for years now, and I am so thrilled to say that we are now getting a unique coaching staff system with RPG style skill trees, similar to the, the features from NCAA 14 that we loved so much. As you play franchise mode now, you will accumulate staff points, and these points can then be spent distributing amidst the four different skill trees, being head coach, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, and front office. I won't go into too much detail on what the exact skills that you can purchase here are, but this feature was very well built. In general, the perks range from attribute boosts for specific positions, to earning advantages in free agency or the trade market, to decreasing the cost of other skills so that you're better equipped to lose a coordinator. Oh yeah, that can happen now, by the way. Uh, overall, there's a, a healthy balance of, of skills, though I'm sure some will argue several are overpowered. Uh, but one thing EA did on that front is make it so league managers can view these skill trees if you wish to ban any of these skills in more competitive leagues. And as we mentioned before, this feature also comes with the ability to hire and fire your coordinators, or to hire another team's coordinator as your head coach. Sick of your division rival getting huge boosts to their offense and kicking your butt every year? Well, now you can just hire that coordinator to be your head coach and get all of those perks from the other team while also setting your rival back to square one. I genuinely love all of this. And with the slight exception of, you know, not having the real names for the coordinators due to the licensing complications that's really out of EA's control right now, or even having the ability to edit the names of these coordinators. You know, besides that, this feature really is everything we could have asked for, and I cannot wait for the different experiences and replay ability more so that this feature is bringing to Madden. It's huge, man. I, I'm stoked for this. 
Now this is EA Sports we're talking about here, so would you believe me if I said that they added even more? Well, they did. Uh, EA has also brought a real home field advantage to Madden 22 with the addition of Momentum Meter and the new home field advantage features on top of that. Now in every game, you're gonna see a meter on your screen, and as one team plays well, they will capture momentum and begin acquiring boosts. These boosts are unique for each stadium, so it's gonna be important to know what unique advantages can be gained by each stadium as you prepare for your opponent that week. However, this boost is not exclusive to the home team. An away team can actually gain momentum and, in a sense, turn the stadium's unique ability against the home team. However, the home team does gain momentum faster and is going to witness some other home field advantage as well as we see the return of a familiar crowd impact in Madden 22 that we've seen in games past. So when the stadium gets rocking, wide receiver routes will shake and you're going to have a harder time communicating with your players on offense. If this is similar to older games, your quarterback's awareness trait will now carry more weight as players with higher awareness will be more resistant to these effects. Though I cannot confirm this right now, uh, but I would expect that's the case. For the most part, I do like this feature. It's something new to spice up gameplay, and I really appreciate that there is now something to make the experience of going on the road much more immersive and challenging. It also really plays well with that idea of weekly game planning and really coming prepared for a more unique challenge uh, so that every opponent and every game doesn't feel so stale every week. I will say that some of the home field abilities are more realistic than others, and I could see some people feeling like this breaks the immersion. Also following the momentum meter of every game is something that's going to take some adjusting to. It's, a, it's another thing to account for, uh, but overall, this is something I'm excited for, and it's something that I would 100% rather make it into the game as it is here than just not having home field advantage at all. And then there is one more major feature being added for Madden 22, but unfortunately the Madden team wasn't able to get it quite ready to roll out with the launch of Madden 22, and that is, by popular demand, the scouting overhaul. Obviously, I haven't had an opportunity to play with this feature as it won't be available until sometime in December. If you want my estimate, I would just say about September 15th. But from what I can tell, this feature will be another massive addition to the game that will add some much, much needed depth and immersion to the scouting process and the draft. Some highlights of this feature that we know about right now are the addition of individual scouting staffs. So you're going to be able to assign certain scouts to different players and regions throughout the country and begin collecting info on prospects that way. As well, we're going to get the ability to see players move up and down the league-wide draft boards that we follow. You're going to get weekly mock drafts and the ability to see who other teams may or may not be going out and scouting. So just a lot more depth and quality to the scouting system as is. Uh, and I'm excited for that, but I, I do understand that there's some frustration out there that this feature won't be available at launch. And, and I'm no EA kiss ass. I think my record speaks pretty clearly on that front, but I honestly think we should be pretty patient on this one. You know, if this didn't even make it into Madden 22 at all, we've already gotten more additions to this mode in this development cycle than we've had in maybe five years combined. And they did this all during a pandemic outside of their offices and we're going to be getting this feature in just a few weeks you know games get delayed all the damn time so i think we should be thankful for the fact that we're getting this here and show some patience with this feature so that they can get it done right and not roll out a half-baked product it's just my two cents i'm willing to be patient with uh, patient with this thing but it is worth noting for your online leagues or for those of you that like to take your franchise years and years into the future that you're not gonna be able to implement this scouting overhaul into any existing franchise files. You're gonna have to start over if you want to get the scouting overhaul. So do what you will with this information. Uh, I'm just passing that along. And that's all of the major features coming to us for Madden 22. Uh, but I wanna wrap up this video by highlighting some of the more subtle additions and changes that I noticed while playing through franchise as well as some notes on some things that are frustratingly still missing from the game as well. 
But one of my favorite subtle additions to the game is actually something that could be considered a major addition depending on who you ask, and that is new faces. <laughs> We've had to choose from the same selection of preset faces now for about a decade, so it's a breath of fresh air to get some more realistic, more unique hairstyles in there. You know, we've been winning Super Bowls and becoming superstars with the same looking dudes for way too long. So I'm really excited to get some new faces and better looking uh, models in there, really. And then another one that, depending on who you ask, could be considered a major addition is new presentation, uh, which has also been brought into the mix here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I'm not the like biggest presentation guy. It's just not at, at the top of my orders of importance, but there's definitely some new stuff this year from intros to immersive commentary to the on-field interface and the transitions that go between the different scenes. Uh, you know, they also finally changed up the Super Bowl celebration after like five years. So if presentation is a big deal for you, I'd recommend finding some other videos on it to determine if it's up to your standards. But for me, I'm definitely happy to see them mix things up so that it doesn't look the same and add some new twists in there as well. Uh, but there aren't any like crazy overhauls such as uh, an animated pregame show or live draft coverage or anything like that. If, if that was a must have for you, it's not in the game. I'm also not gonna spend a lot of time breaking down the gameplay here in this video, because to be completely honest, this is an honest review, I just haven't had enough time to give a fair evaluation of the gameplay, but you know, real quick, in the three or four games that I played, it felt very smooth. I prefer the player movement this year to last year, and some of the quick releases I was getting from my quarterback in the play action boot game were sick. Uh, this is more of a franchise review video, so if gameplay is a huge concern for you, I'd recommend exploring some vids from other Madden YouTubers, or tune into my first rebuild on TFG Plays, or on my Twitch, where I'm sure to comment further on the gameplay as I get a better feel for it. So those links are all in the description below. Another subtle addition that I was pleasantly surprised to see was uh, the first use of next-gen stats on the player page in the actual franchise interface. Next Gen Stats is a new feature that was implemented with the introduction of the next generation consoles for Madden 21, uh, but this was the first time that they really kind of started to implement it into the core franchise, because before it was really just in there as presentation for gameplay, um, but right now you can actually start to see some of these uh, different next gen stats on the player's page. Uh, so you can see like pressures for pass rushers, total air yards for receivers, and right now it's just some cool data to look at and get a better sense of how your guy's doing, but this is really a nice step, and I wasn't sure if this was going to make it into Madden 22, because this really has incredible potential down the road for, you know, a more dynamic player development system. For example, I've talked in the past about how there's really no real way to evaluate offensive linemen in Madden, and this has a ton of potential to turn into a better way for linemen to have breakout season seasons, go up in dev, get better XP boosts, uh, especially on that offensive line position that's just, it's just hard to assign, you know, how well is a guy doing? Well, getting that pressure stat and pressures allowed would be a huge step towards a, a more dynamic player development system in the future. But for now, it, it is cool to see some of those stats and for online leagues, that's some good information that you can use as well. Moving on, uh, according to EA, they also have done some work on trade and draft logic. I would take this with one massive brick of salt. You know, while it's good to see them constantly working on this stuff, I would set your expectations very low as it's still very far from where it needs to be. Uh, that said, it does seem they have worked on the logic of teams drafting quarterbacks. And one thing that was certainly addressed was the amount of players at the top of auto-generated draft classes who now have hidden development traits, which was a huge frustration for many of us. Really kind of made that draft feel stale because it felt like everyone in the top 10 of every draft had normal development. Well, they've brought that up significantly and having one of those top 10 picks is gonna feel much more meaningful now. The scenario engine has also been built upon and expanded. I don't know the exact number of scenarios that they added this year, but they have definitely added some new creative scenes. Uh, to form more of a narrative between the locker room, the fans, and the media, ultimately increasing that immersion that we're all looking for. And I say scenes because they have now added actual animated scenes for a lot of these scenarios, 
which just helps the immersion even further where it's not just a text message now you can actually see the coach go to the podium or you know talk to bobby wagner in the locker room or whoever it may be there's still a lot of work to do with the scenario engine but it is good to see them building upon some of the progress that they have made since rolling out this feature in madden 20 that's been kind of developing slowly but they made some good good strides this year the very last thing i want to mention here is that uh, ea has done a great job of listening to something myself and many others have been echoing for years. And that's just giving us the simple ability to customize our experience in the settings. So whether it was in Madden 21 uh, or some of the new things that they've added for Madden 22, we now have way more settings in place to really cater our experience to, to what we're looking for. Specifically for Madden 22, they've given us the options to disable the pre-order bonus for, for staff points you can disable practice injuries, and in general, just the weekly game plan feature is really designed in a way that you don't have to use that feature if you don't want to, but it's now there for us that want that depth and immersion. And for those, by the way, that haven't picked up Madden in a while, really since it came out on next gen for Madden 21, there's actually dozens of new toggleable options in place that were added via live service updates to Madden 21. And I've really enjoyed a lot of that stuff, such as the, the play cooldowns that can restrict how often and how many times someone can call the same play, as well as the development trait regression system now is a toggleable option, just giving us that option to customize the franchise experience, pick which features we like, which ones we don't, uh, and kind of give us the game that, that we think is best for us. And that's big. I, other sports games have been doing that for a while, and Madden a couple years ago was way behind in that in that department so i want to applaud them for that it's it's something that's that's big for me but while all of this stuff is amazing you know i wouldn't be doing my job here if i, I didn't point out some of the big detractors still present in franchise mode for madden 22 and beyond and all of this is stuff that will be covered much more in depth when i get to my madden 23 wish list here more towards the holidays but let's just graze the surface uh, for some of the stuff that might impact your Madden 22 experience in a more negative light. And first, above all, is something I'm really disappointed in it not making for Madden 22, and that is updated positional terminology. As many, if not all of you know, it's the year 2021, and we no longer refer to players on a macro scale as defensive end, defensive tackle, outside linebacker, middle linebacker. Instead, we classify players as edge, interior defensive lineman, and linebacker. And then the scheme that that player ends up in, well, that will change which position they should be listed at in a more traditional sense. The frustrating thing is that EA has even begun acknowledging the updated positional terminology is, you know, they grouped interior defensive linemen together and edge players together when they revealed their player ratings. Unfortunately, when you load up the game, computer teams still have virtually no concept of how to properly use these players in accordance to their scheme. You're still going to see teams filling out their roster with nine edge players and two interior defensive linemen or vice versa. You'll see them drafting edge defensive ends when they really need an interior defensive lineman style defensive end. And then they're still going to go ahead and put that 250 pound defensive end as a three technique in their 3-4 base defense anyway or you'll see outside linebackers like Jalen Smith and Darius Leonard ending up getting full-time roles as edge players if they sign with a different team or get a new coach for their team, and then they end up leading the league in sacks. And these are just a fraction of the amount of problems that this updated positional terminology is going to present throughout any given franchise playthrough. For me and many others, this is a huge detractor from franchise mode as it really does take away from all of the cool features that they've added. And sometimes it just makes me want to turn the game off in disappointment, to be completely honest. Now, there are lots of issues in this same classification that I would call core franchise issues that have to deal with the specific football operations inside the game. But the lack of modern terminology for front seven players on defense is by far the most frustrating problem still present in franchise mode, in my opinion. Uh, but some other changes people were hoping for on this front uh, are just going to have to be pushed onto the back burner for now. Things like the ability to structure front load, back load, or renegotiate contracts, 
rollover cap space, compensatory draft picks. This is all stuff that's still nowhere to be found and don't really appear, uh, appear to be in the works for live service updates for Madden 22 as far as I can tell. Uh, I'll also add that there appears to be no logic at this time for coach firings as I've seen highly successful coaches like Brian Flores and Kyle Shanahan get fired after just one down year. Uh, perhaps something like NCAA 14 had with a hot seat meter would be a nice little live service update there. Just a little suggestion there. There are, of course, lots of other things missing and plenty to be added in the future. Uh, but for me, I'm just actually like really excited that the progress that EA made with franchise this year. I I've been saying for a long time, it's not about us getting everything we want overnight. It's about EA legitimately putting in the correct resources to franchise mode from a raw business logistical perspective. Uh, so that we can enjoy an improved game as we build up towards a product that they can be truly proud of in two or three years time. Franchise mode in Madden 22 is and never was going to be perfect, but I will honestly say that I am really impressed and highly optimistic with what they have set in motion on that front. This is much more than a, a step in the right direction that we keep mocking. Like I said, this is more stuff for franchise mode than we've gotten in the last five years combined, and they're still going. So as far as the big question of should I buy this game, my honest answer for most of you is gonna be, yeah, I, I think you should. Now, of course, it's a little different for everyone. If you're a really casual gamer, you don't play a lot of Madden, you know, I'd say 60, $70 for this game when you can just get Madden 21 and download the updated roster, play for a couple hours. Sure, 60, $70 might be a little bit steep, but you know, if you're anywhere from a moderate to extreme Madden or NFL fan, I, I do think you're going to be happy with this game. And you're definitely going to notice the changes from last year's game that I do think for most of you, you will consider to be worth the purchase. And then many of you have already asked me uh, if you should wait for the scouting overhaul to, to buy the game. And honestly, I, I don't think so. But that is up to you. You know, the game isn't, it's gonna cost the same in September as it does at launch. So, you know, if you're gonna get the game anyway, I would say just go ahead and buy it. If you're gonna wait to, if you really wanna wait to see how the scouting overhaul looks before you do make that decision to buy it, if you're on the fence, then yeah, maybe you wait. So that's just kind of my two cents on that. Uh, but I don't usually give out grades or whatever, at least for video games. I do plenty of grades for NFL players. Uh, but if I had to grade Madden 22, I think I'd give it a 79.1 or a 7.9 out of 10. I choose this number because this was Aaron Rodgers' PFF grade for the first year he started for the Packers after sitting a couple years behind Brett Favre. He had a really nice season grading out at 79.1 before bursting onto the scene in 2009. This is how I feel about Madden this year. You know, they sat the last couple years out, but this year they committed to the game mode and have shown some real tangible excitement. And we're gonna have some fun with some hiccups along the road with Madden 22, but if they stay on the same path that they are on now, the game can go from good to great very quickly. Uh, I also just needed to throw some Aaron Rodgers love in there because he got absolutely slandered by EA's marketing and ratings team this year. But that's it, that's gonna do it. I really hope you enjoyed my honest review of Madden 22 Franchise Mode. This video took a lot of time and effort, so I'd really appreciate it if you uh, enjoyed to follow me here for NFL analysis throughout the season and draft, uh, but even more so on TFG Plays, link down in the description below, where you can follow my upcoming Realistic Rebuild series. It, it'd mean the world to me if we could get TFG Plays up to 10,000 subs by 2022. And I think you guys are going to really like the content building up over there as well. So go check it out and we'll see you over there. But until next time, happy football season, everybody. And cheers. Cheers.